Since China joined the World Trade Organization 20 years ago, its foreign trade grew eight times. Its share of global trade surged from 4% to 13%, and China became the second largest economy in the world. Before China joined the WTO, the United States was the largest trading partner of 152 countries in the world. Today, China is the largest trading partner of 128 countries, while the United States maintains that status with only 57 countries. But all of this came with a price that even the Chinese believe they cannot afford. Let's hear what one of China's leading scholars say about the legacy of the past two decades. Hello everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. One of the problems contributing to the Western world's lack of good understanding of China and some assessment of the Chinese economy is that they don't know what the Chinese really think. Whether they are government officials, ordinary people, or China's experts and scholars, their real opinions and thoughts are mostly hidden from the West. Aside from censorship and the language barrier, the biggest problem is that very few Chinese dare to openly speak their minds. Most are afraid of the political consequences. Occasionally, we do hear from a few who are not afraid. Professor Sun Miping is one of them. Professor Sun taught sociology at Beijing and Tsinghua universities, China's best colleges. He advocated political reform and pushed for freedom of information. In 2018, when the trade war with the United States started, Professor Sun wrote an essay titled, Why China Can't Afford a Trade War and Cannot Fight. He pointed out that China would have to make big concessions because, one, the United States is better endowed with natural resources and is self-sufficient. Two, the U.S. owns most of the advanced technologies that China relies on. Three, China needs foreign reserves in dollars to import food, semiconductors, and oil. Four, the United States has more allies than China. His article was censored by Beijing, and some people attacked him for his views. Professor Sun has also acquired fame of sorts because some people call him Xi Jinping's professor, but that's not really the case. Few people may be aware that China's two top leaders are both doctors. Xi Jinping holds a doctorate degree from Tsinghua University, and his premier Li Keqiang holds a doctorate degree in economics from Beijing University. Although some people question how Xi Jinping got his PhD while being the deputy governor of Zhejiang province, for the record, he is a doctor in Marxist theory and ideology. His PhD dissertation was reviewed by the academic committee at Tsinghua University, and one of the professors on the committee was Professor Sun Liping. Recently, a video has been circulating online about a talk Professor Sun gave about the legacy of our generation judged from the vantage point of future generations. It's very compelling. Please take a look. Walker,看到,将来子孙后代写历史教科书写到我们这代人 这是最独特的一代人，独特在什么地方呢？就我们这一代人就把地球眼睛这么多一年形成的那点财富，原来埋在地底下的，就这一代人就给弄出来用光了。每个人挖出来了，所有给抽出来了，天然气弄出来了，
。我们现在看起来是财富这些高楼大厦啊，可能绝大多数就是一堆垃圾。这堆垃圾有地儿放，没地儿放都不知道。In a matter of two minutes, Professor Sun summarized China's decades of economic growth, marked by high energy consumption, high pollution, and low human rights. Beneath the glory of the economic takeoff lies the dark reality of pollution, sweatshops, labor camps, and a health crisis caused by barbaric industrialization. Three years ago, a study by the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Show that lowered life expectancy and reduced agriculture production due to air pollution alone could cost the Chinese economy 267 billion renminbi per year. In addition, there are over 450 officially recognized cancer villages in rural China, where contaminated water and air have caused widespread cancer. And these are only official statistics. The reality is far worse than what our future generations can forgive us for. 我前些天跟清华的学生讲，有同有同学知道清华建筑学院，这中国山最有名的建筑学院了。我就说，我说你千万不要把里面盖的这堆房子看得太重，将来子孙后代比我们会盖房子，将来对他们来说，盖房子是很简单的事那时候，他面对着你给他留下的这堆烂楼啊，啊，质量低劣的、面目可憎的，他不是感谢你给他留下这这个财富，啊，他可能是发愁这堆破楼怎么办，怎么拆，拆这垃圾往哪儿放？各位，这一点都不是笑话。就几年前，美国就有很正式的学术论文在研究，说中国这楼都差不多都是这些年一块盖的。到时候在一块儿拆这垃圾的怎么办？有正式的研究的各位，哎，所以各位啊，你想啊，将来啊，我们假设离开这个世界了，你留给子孙后代的是什么呢 ？Professor Sun then described what China will be like 75 years from now。这七十五年后，差不多你是最小吧？二十五岁。就算你最小，就算你最能活，活七十五年，好吧？就我们可以想个形象一点吧。七十五年后，我们这里最小的、最能活的这位要离开世界了，这个世界了，我们早就离开了。你留给子子孙后代的是什么呢？可以说，我觉得一点疑问都不会有的，空空如也，百孔千疮，一片废墟，这个还有疑问吗？ His last words, "Is there still any doubt?" were uttered so matter-of-factly that I was left speechless. I don't know precisely when and where Professor Sun gave this talk, but I hope this video can help us all reflect on the past 20 years, especially our accomplishments and legacy in the eyes of our offspring. I hope Western scholars, researchers, policymakers, businessmen, NGOs all make an effort. And take the time to hear the real voices of Chinese people, and the opinions of the true China experts, so that the official CCP rhetoric and propaganda will no longer blind the world. That's what I believe. They should all subscribe to my channel, and YouTube should push my videos like there's no tomorrow. One of my earliest videos is about how Bill Clinton helped China join WTO. It's called "Nice Try, Bill." You should check it out. That's all for today. Thank you. See you soon.